One day I'm gonna learn how to take off shirts. Not today though. <laughs> got there that's what matters I just spent the past five minutes trying to kill this fly in my room and my goal was to use as little bug spray as possible because I didn't want my room smelling like bug spray when I went to sleep and I'm not gonna say I did a good job <laughs> so nothing a uh, couple hours with the window open won't cure jumping into the video with that little prelude. The other day my girlfriend asked me if I am worried about my obsession getting to the point where I am no longer relatable to the general public. And my response was no. I'm already coming from a place where I don't really feel like I relate to most people. and over the course of this journey of setting myself up to be self-employed, creating my own business, that process will require me to become more relatable to the general public than I have ever before. What I consider when I was growing up I've always been a fan of comic books, um, superheroes, anime, which actually at this point in the game, many people in my generation do share commonalities with me. So perhaps it will be that much easier to relate to um, people who grew up really digging Superman and Goku. And when I was a kid, I would always think Goku's so cool, he dedicates himself to training and bettering himself all the time, looking for challenges that he can put his body through to evolve and transform and become the best version of himself. And I would always consider that and apply it to my life. How can I be better? How can I evolve? How can I transform into the best version of myself? And that is literally the mission statement, maybe not verbatim, but the mission statement of my business plan is everyone wants to be better. We all have it within ourselves, that desire to transform ourselves and our lives for the better. And that's what I'm selling is a shift in the mindset. What I consider is many people, they have an idea as to what is required in order to improve their lives, in order to improve themselves. And because they have this preconceived notion of the amount of effort that it takes to get better at a thing, get healthier, exercise, eat correctly, get a different job, because they have this awareness of the difficulty that's involved in all of these pursuits, they just turn themselves off of it. And instead they stick with what they are used to, the regular routine, the complacency of their daily life. My goal is to rework a client's mind around that concept of change being difficult. I want people to feel rewarded by putting an effort to achieve a thing. Even if it's quote unquote difficult. Something else I've observed over the past couple of years of getting into nutrition and health and wellness is as I further progress along the way of diving deep into this passion, the simpler and the easier the process becomes. Granted, I've always been an individual who can easily 
set my mind to something and see it through to fruition. But at the same time, when I consider, you know, I was working out today and I was thinking about what I wanted to say on camera. And the thing that popped in my head is I can't really point to a moment in my life where I was actually successful at a thing. I've completed tasks. I've set goals for myself and achieved those goals, but I have never truly been successful in life. That is, in fact, the one experience that I feel like I haven't had at this point in my life. To experience true success, something that I've done, that I've created, that is the definition of success. You could call it monetary. You could call it in the public eye, something that I can point to that is considered successful. I've never done that. This needs to be it. This business, this project, what I am dedicating my life to for the rest of my life until I can re retire at the age of 50 or something like that. This needs to be successful. And it's a bit scary to consider that this will be the first thing in my life that I need to become successful at. Since I've never experienced it, I don't know what it looks like. And most of all, I don't truly know what it takes to become successful. This is where mentors come in. I don't really have a mentor. I have YouTube. <laughs> I have the opportunity to watch podcasts and listen to other people who have achieved millions and billions of dollars in the same industry that I'm pursuing. That's what I have at my disposal. I don't really want a mentor at this point. I want to commit myself to the task and learn along the way. I consider the knowledge that I've acquired when it comes to fat loss and health and wellness and getting in shape and the way of the shred, the philosophy, and in the small amount of clients that I've helped at this point, I continue to arrive at the understanding that as much knowledge as I have to provide to a person who is ignorant and exactly what to do in order to achieve the desired health and wellness results, it is more about changing their way of looking at the process to achieve their goals. That's more important than anything. It's like that concept, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. To me, it's the same thing. A person can come up to me, they can ask me, Sean, how do I get shredded? And the first question that comes to mind is how committed are you to the process? How committed are you to making the necessary changes to your life in order to achieve the desired results? And then from that answer, I can gauge exactly how long it will take and what adjustments need to occur in your thinking in order to get to where you want to be. I think most people, you know what, I'm going to leave that thought for another time because I think I need more data. I have a general idea as to people's levels of commitment and I think I need to work with more people in order to solidify that idea. We all want to be better. Superman, Goku, Batman, idols, 
people to aspire to. Granted, they were fictional, but the way that they lived their lives is the thing that inspired me. Committing themselves to self-betterment. And I took that away with me. I also want to take a second to talk about the dark passenger and the communication between the prior self and the self that I need to become in order to experience success. I acknowledge that my past self essentially, essentially, let me run that. I acknowledge that my past self essentially needs to die in order for me to achieve success. Who was my past self? A nihilist, a person who doesn't really care about an outcome because at the end of the day, I was born in this body and I'm gonna die in this body and everything else around me is just gonna be here with or without me. I was a hedonist person seeking stimulation in all of my favorite ways, food, sex, entertainment, rinse and repeat, food, sex, entertainment, sleep, rinse and repeat, food, sex, entertainment, sleep. That's not going to get me anywhere. I noticed that this past self, I, I was relating it while I was working out to uh, Dexter in that show, Dexter Morgan, uh, played by the actor Michael C. Hall. And he refers to his, uh, his dark passenger, the guy that, because uh, he's a serial killer. I relate my nihilistic self to Dexter Morgan's Dark Passenger because I know what it takes to subdue him, keep him in check, put him in a cage, quote unquote, murder him. However, if I just feed him a little bit of food, something sweet, something tasty, an indulgence, how quickly it revives him. My willpower is strong when I don't accommodate that self. I can look at a cookie and say, if I eat that cookie, I'm gonna want another cookie. And the more cookies I eat, the harder it will be to control that dark passenger. And that's my journey, that's my burden. So instead, I just avoid the cookies, if that makes sense. There's books I wanna write. There's content I have to make regarding the process of changing your mindset from who you currently are, which only gets you so far, to the version that you want to be, which produces so much better results for your life. My dark passenger is here He's in a cage and I am getting better at deciding when it's an appropriate time to let him out. And yeah, there are times to let him out. I admit that in times of festivity and celebration. In my honest opinion, I've been letting him out too often for my liking. There have been too many circumstances where he comes out of the cage and it's unplanned. But extenuating circumstances allow me to feel like it's time to. And that's my process of mastering myself. This was more eloquent in my head. 
I'm gonna have to watch this back. Anyway, with all that being said, I wanna sell a shift in my client's mindset. And I want that to be my success story. Thanks for watching.